Hi, this is Mark Hyman of PC World, and I'm here at the Qualcomm Snapdragon Technology Summit here in Maui. We're actually looking at the Snapdragon 8CX. This is their first Snapdragon actually designed ground up for the PC, and what we have here is the reference design. Uh, it's not actually tied to any particular OEM. It's sort of showing off what the 8CX's capabilities can do. Now, I will say that, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> We are banned from running any sort of benchmark, so you can't actually see what this baby can do in the real world. But we have the freedom to go ahead and play with it and look at what it can do as far as just, you know, surfing the web and doing other PC-ish things. So what we see here is we can see that it is actually an 8CX machine uh, running at about, you know, half a gigahertz right now. Remember that the 8CX is built upon a traditional sort of four by four big little architecture where you have four performance cores, four efficiency cores, and most of the time you're actually running in the efficiency mode. That's the whole point of the Qualcomm Snapdragon architecture. You don't need a high performance machine. So this is the reference design. I'm not sure we're going to be able to see anything really particular, but you can see it's a traditional laptop, a um, couple of USB-C ports here. Trackpad, keyboard, uh, port there that we don't know exactly what it is. We go over to the other side though and I expect to see, and yes there it is, we've got uh, power rocker, volume rocker, and the SIM card slot. Obviously this is going to be a critical factor, uh, critical element I should say, in the 8CX platform. Right now, the 8CX will be an LTE machine, but in the future, 5G capabilities will be added. Um, I think we can see, yeah, look, it's, if you look at the bottom here, you're seeing some relatively bare bones machines, and there's actually a, um, some sort of a port there that we don't know exactly what it is, uh, fan vents and so forth. So this is obviously an unrefined, unpolished design, but let's go ahead and take a look at what it can do now. You're just going to find probably, since we can't actually run benchmarks, that we're going to be in a situation where this, again, sort of just feels faster. Um, it's not quite clear. It looks like this is on cellular right now. So we're seeing the power of the Qualcomm cellular connection. Let's just go to uh, PC World to come and see how fast it flips open. Now remember, we're running Internet. Sorry, we're running Microsoft Edge on this. Microsoft Edge has been the browser that has really performed best under the Qualcomm environment. That partially has to do with the fact that it has been typically running under Windows 10s. In fact, that is an excellent idea to go ahead and check what sort of operating system. Oops. Let's see what we're running here, actually. Slight misclick there. Let's go back into the system and see what we got here. Uh, Windows 10 Pro. So we actually are actually right up into the Windows 10 environment rather than Windows 10 and S mode. Again, Edge has been a superior browser in Windows 10 and S mode precisely because it offers even more battery life than the, uh, uh, the Chrome browser. So let's talk a little bit about what this chip can do. Um, we don't know exactly the clock speed of it. Um, we do know that we're talking about days of battery life, more than 24 hours. And what we're hopefully going to see here is uh, performance, though, that's competitive with what an Intel Core can offer. What we've been told is that this is going to be essentially comparable to an Core i5 U-series chip, which would honestly put it well within the range of what we consider to be competitive performance. So that's PC World. Um, let's go ahead and test it using our one of our typical stress tests, I guess, for... <laughs> for internet browsing, and that is the Chronicles, the San Francisco Chronicles, sfgate.com. Typically a morass of ads and video and things like that. And let's see how it looks. It looks pretty good. We're not seeing any really any slowdown here. The page is instantly responsive, really, uh, or briefly responsive. We're not we don't I'm we're not running any sort of ad blockers here. Um, I think that if we go to, say, a, a YouTube environment, we're going to see no problems at all. Uh, remember, this particular chip has the Cinema Core, uh, or at least part of the Cinema Core from it, um, which is going to make uh, video playback very optimized with not really any concerns with uh, uh, power loss. So this is the Captain Marvel trailer. Oops, let's go ahead and pull screen that guy. 
Um, let's see if we get this, uh, is this 4K? No, 720p, that's not gonna do it. Let's at least kick it up to 1080p. See how that looks. Hmm, seeing a little bit of a lag in some of the transition, but that might be the network. So that's 1080p. Let's just quickly go into a, another trailer. How about something with 4K in it? That's what we want, right? So we'll go to, eh, see this is 4K and something we can look at. Let's go ahead and check that out. There we go. So we'll double check the settings. 720p isn't going to cut it. Let's kick it up to 2160p. Again, that's, I'm not sure exactly what resolution we're running here. Let's see if we can find that out. Let's go to the system. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's go to the display. Uh oh. And the device has become unresponsive. <laughs> Oops, you can see that the cursor is not moving. Um, let's see if I can get actually Alt Tab. Nope, it looks like we've got a crash. Um, okay, so this is a prototype device. We're talking about early hardware. Remember, the um, this chip is supposed to, the 860X is supposed to ship in about the third quarter of next year, so you can actually see that there are some bugs and kinks to be worked out. However, from the time that we were able to see it, um, it everything looked fine. It may have been the 4K video. I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but anyways, stay tuned. We'll find out a little bit more about this uh, in the weeks and months to follow. And we'll hopefully have a little bit more to talk about on the 8CX um, on PCWorld.com. Again, it's Mark Hockman from PCWorld.com. Thanks for joining us, and uh, stay tuned for other stories and videos from the Snapdragon Technology Conference here in Maui.